Yay, it's nice to see faces pop up. <laughs> so good morning, everybody. Um, actually, before we do our usual uh, big greeting where everybody says hi to each other, we wanted to just take a moment to um, acknowledge everything that's happening around us. Uh, you know, many, many of you, many of us have been um, working nonstop over the last few months trying to respond rapidly to COVID-19 and, you know, the, the a tremendous amount of disruption and, and changes to daily lives that's been happening because of that. And then with the events from the last um, couple of weeks with yet more uh, killings of black people, it's just, we know that for many of us, it's weighing heavily on our hearts and our minds. Um, and so we just wanted to acknowledge that it um, can be difficult to have to continue this pace of work and keep going as though um, life goes on knowing that we are um, feeling again the weight of the injustice and um, the, the ripple effects and um, impact of uh, structural and systemic racism. And so we know that also topics like today's coffee chat on data might feel like it's a distant or <laughs> kind of a less essential topic to to talk about when there are so many important issues to be addressing and, and tackling together. And yet we also feel a great appreciation to all of you for joining us this morning because gathering together like this is one way of um, healing but and also to keep feeding each other's spirits to, to continue this work together. And focusing on topics like data and learning how to use data, find data, that can be a really powerful tool for the kind of organizing and activating a collective response to um, injustice and, and structural racism that we're dealing with today. And so just wanted to start off acknowledging that, thanking all of you for being here with us this morning. And so with that, we, we wanna encourage everyone to just say hi, again, turn on your cameras if you're, uh, comfortable with it and greet each other say big, with a big smile and a, and a warm hello to everyone good morning and you can unmute yourselves because we love hearing the happy hellos from morning. everybody good morning good morning good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. hi everybody good morning. great thank you okay now you can go ahead and mute yourselves again and if you want to turn off your cameras feel free to do that and then i'm going to share the slides again and start with our official coffee chat. So this morning we will be uh, getting a guided tour of DataShare Santa Cruz County, and we'll be joined today by Sarah Adler from the Health Improvement Partnership. And you'll hear more about her in just a moment. But for now, I'm Nicole Young, and I'm one of the consultants that is facilitating what's called the core investments process. And I'm joined by my colleague. Nicole Lezen, hi everyone. And we've been involved with CORE now for a, a few years, facilitating a process uh, that is leading towards collective action, collective impact in our community. And again, some of you may be familiar with CORE or you might primarily hear about CORE in the context of it being a funding model that the county and city of Santa Cruz adopted a few years ago as their way of funding safety net services in our community. But over the last few years, the work that Nicole and I have been doing with several leaders and, and staff and community members from nonprofits and public agencies and grassroots groups, has really been taking that original concept of CORE being a funding model and broaden it to be much more of a, a movement towards equitable health and well-being in our community for all people. And again, through a lot of community input and discussion, we've crafted these mission and vision statements for CORE, which are really our way of expressing what this is about, that this is more than just a project. It's not a project, and it's not a specific program. It's, it's this broader effort to inspire collective action in order to create that safe, healthy community where everybody has equitable opportunities to thrive. And you'll see that equity is a recurring theme as we talk about the mission and vision. It's also part of our value statements for CORE. 
And so when we talk about equitable health and well-being, we're really talking about how do we uh, both provide the kinds of programs that create policies or advocate for policies and structures and systems that create these core conditions for health and well-being for all people throughout the lifespan in our community. And the really important part about these core conditions is understanding and really uh, identifying the ways that they're connected and looking at opportunities for collective action at the intersection of those core conditions. So right now, as you know, as we started off acknowledging, there's a lot of concerns and worries and anger and, and uh, frustration about what's happening in uh, communities across our country and uh, in terms of uh, the historical racism that, that still uh, shows up today and what that means in terms of people's ability to live in safe and just communities and how that impacts their health and wellness and in turn how that impacts their economic security and opportunities for mobility. So these are recurring themes that we are diving into and continually exploring in CORE and data is very much a part of helping to tell that story, understand the story, and uh, figure out what kinds of actions and responses are needed. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Nicole Lesson at this point to tell us more about what we're going to do today. Okay, thanks Nicole. Well, as you know from the invitation and the title slide, we're getting a guided tour of data share today from Sarah Adler, who is with the Health Improvement Partnership, and she and Dorian Seamster, also with the Health Improvement Partnership, have been working very hard over the last couple of years to bring us this tool to our county. And unfortunately, we're going to be losing Sarah, but for a very good reason. She is going to pursue her master's in public health at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore, but she'll always be with us. Maybe we can lure her back here at some point, but she'll always be with us because her voice, which you're going to hear in just a moment, is on a lot of the tutorials on data share. And we encourage you to take advantage of those. Today, as I said, is just a tour, but there's so much in data share. Nicole Young and I have used data share for our local projects and including CORE and others. And every time we use it, we learn something new. So um, while this may be a lot of information that you're about to get, there's a lot there to explore. They've done such a great job of making it as accessible as possible. And this chat is part of that effort. So we encourage you to, uh, to follow along. I'm gonna put a link to data share in the chat. So if you are on a screen and you can follow along with another screen, another window. Um, you can do your own versions of everything that Sarah is going to describe. So um, please do so. As you can see from this slide that shows the information from your registration, um, a lot of you, three quarters, had not really used data share at all. So um, another 19% had used it a little bit. So you're acquainted with at least how to get there and maybe some of the, the main features. And then a few of us have used it quite a bit and some of you don't know whether you've used it or not. So we hope to be able to address each of these audiences, but we're gonna concentrate on those of you who are really new to data share and hope that everyone, whether you've used it a lot or a little, will have a chance to learn more. So Sarah, with, with that, I'll turn it back over to you. And thank you again, you and Dorian, for, for this work and for also uh, sharing your knowledge of data share with everyone here. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Um, so my name is Sarah Adler and I'm a program analyst at the Health Improvement Partnership. Um, I'm gonna show my screen so you can see data share. Great, okay. Is everyone able to see? Perfect. Okay, so this is DataShare, and Nicole put the URL if you want to follow along in the chat. So DataShare is an interactive data platform with local, state, and national data. And um, I'm just going to go through kind of a brief overview. There'll be time for you to practice on your own. And again, feel free to follow along as I walk through the site. Um, data share can be used for program development, grant writing, if you're looking for any data, um, if, you're, if you were going to go speak to city council or the board of supervisors and want data to back up what you're saying, um, if you know, a student's doing a report on Santa Cruz County and wants data to show what they're saying, um, it's a great resource for all of those things. 
So this is the homepage that we're on right now. And of course we have this uh, COVID-19 resources. So if you wanna go to the health department website where they have their Power BI graphic, there's a link to it here. Um, and then we also have some data on data share around COVID-19 and I'll walk through that a bit later. So scrolling down, um, here we have this learn about data share Santa Cruz County. So as Nicole said, there are tutorials on data share. Um, and if you click this one, it's kind of a two minute getting started tutorial. If you're very new to data share and want kind of just a very brief high level overview, that's a great place to start. Um, we also have dashboards and reports and I'll go into that more later, um, but they're basically interactive or ways to be interactive with the data and um, create things that you can then move into other presentations. And I'll go over that, but this is, these are links to tutorials. So if you want um, more information on that, that's a place to go. We also have Santa Cruz County demographics and then other resources. So these are um, other places to look for data if you can't find the data that you want on data share. And um, local reports, so like the community assessment project, the CAP is on there, the Santa Cruz birth report, things like that can be found there. Um, so Santa Cruz, or so data share has 270 different indicators across a variety of topics. And here are some of the topics here. So we have health, economy, education, environment, um, and well indicators might fall under a certain topic. As Nicole said, obviously we know that these are all interconnected and affect each other, but we do have 270 indicators from 30 different sources, such as like the American Community Survey, um, Healthy Kids Survey, and those are constantly being updated. So um, HCI, who we run the platform through, updates the data as soon as it's available um, at the source. So those, they're also uploading more indicators all the time. So there's constantly new data is being added. Um, scrolling down a little bit further, we have the tutorials again here. So here's that getting started tutorial I mentioned building a dashboard, creating a report, we have an FAQ section, and then we also have the tutorials in Spanish. Um, so I'm gonna start up here under data. So there's a couple ways to find data on the site. So I'm just gonna start with one of the easiest ways is to go to all data, and then you can search by keyword. Um, so let's say I am um, working in an organization that wants to do some programming or some messaging around um, like rent evictions and renters rights and kind of how COVID's affecting evictions and what you're what you can do. Um, and so I really want to target those areas that have a higher percentage of renters. So I'm going to search by keyword and you can do this in this section or if you look up here on the upper right hand corner, there's also a search bar and I'm just going to type in rent. And so it's showing me that here's an indicator on renters spending 30% or more of their household income on rent. So I'm gonna select this and it will take me to the page. And I'm just clicking on county. I wanna see an overview of the county. Um, but as I'll go into a little bit more later, all of the indicators can be broken out at different levels. So everything's available at the county level and then some indicators like this are also available at the zip code, census tract, and census place level. So this is an indicator detail page, and so there's one of these for each indicator. So there's 270 of these pages. Um, and so at the top, we can see what the indicator is, and then um, this just kind of gives more information on what it is and why it's important. If we scroll down a little bit further, we can see that 61.1% of renters are spending 30% or more of their household income on rent. We can also see the source here. So this comes from the American Community Survey, um, when it was last updated, the measurement period, and then comparisons. So one really helpful thing about data share is that there are comparisons, so we can see Compared to other California counties, where do we fall? So um, you can see that we are worse than other California counties. We're worse than the US counties. Um, so it also compares us to the California average value. So we're higher than that. And then also higher than the US value. 
um, we're not statistically different from our prior value and the overall trend is going down, which is good. Um, so this indicator shows a change over time graph here. And one really useful feature is that all of these graphs can be downloaded as a JPEG. So um, if I wanted to create a report and wanted to, maybe I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation because I want to show my organization at staff meeting um, the different areas that we need to target or um, just kind of more information about what's going on with rent, I can download this as a JPEG. And so here you can see it popped up in my downloads. And then I'm just going to pull it. This is just a blank PowerPoint presentation and I'm just gonna pull my report or uh, that graph into it. And here we go here, it's already in a PowerPoint presentation. Going back to data share, um, we can see that this indicator also breaks out by age groups. So we can see which age groups are substantially more affected by uh, rent. So 15 to 24 in the 65 plus age groups look to be statistically worse than the overall value. And then, so again, all of these graphs here can be downloaded. So if I wanted this one, I could also download it as a JPEG and pull it into my PowerPoint presentation. You could also put this in, you know, your Word document or something like that. Um, so this indicator happens to break out by age, but um, other indicators break out by gender or race and ethnicity as well. It really just depends on what the source considers to be stable values. So um, that decision is made by the source and then it's just pushed over to data share. Scrolling down a little bit further, um, we can see that you can download the indicator data as a CSV file. So I use this a lot um, if I'm going to put the data into Tableau to create other visualizations and that's super useful and easy. It just downloads to your computer the same way that the JPEG did. Um, so here you can see, so it says county and then census place, zip code, and census tract. So if you wanted to look at this data at the zip code level, you can click zip code. Let it load for a second. Here we go. Okay, so now it's broken out at the zip code level. So we can see um, kind of a comparison between zip codes. And I'm going to change this. So right now it's looking at grouped, but I want it to compare to the Santa Cruz County average value. So I can see here the Santa Cruz County value was 61.1, as we saw. And then these are the zip codes that are seeing higher burdens of rent. So 95007, 100% of renters are spending 30% or more of their income on rent. That would be definitely a place that I want to target. Um, so you can also scroll down further and just see it broken out at the zip code level. Um, but you could also download that as a CSV, download the zip code level data as a CSV. Um, if we scroll down a little bit further, we can see this related content section. So this is super useful for finding other data points or other resources related to this. Um, so we can see here, if you're interested in this rent indicator, you may also be interested in looking at persons with disability living in poverty, um, households that are asset limited, income constrained and employed, and looking for other indicators that way. Um, we also have some community resources here. So we have the CAP. Um, and so let's say I know that CAP has an indicator for a um, data point around housing and affordable housing, and I really want to add that as well. So I could click on this, and it's going to take me, I'm going to view the cap, um, and it's going to take me to the community assessment project. So I'm just going to scroll down, and I know on page 34, um, there's information about housing. So I'm gonna scroll down to page 34. Sorry, I know it's flying by on your screen. And I can go just take a screenshot of that data um, and pull that into my PowerPoint as well. So let's see. I can look at there's median sale price data. Um, there's housing burden data. And here there's an estimate of average rents. So maybe I really wanna include this in my PowerPoint as well. And I'm just going to take a screenshot of this part and then pull that into my PowerPoint 
as well. So there we go. I have some a PowerPoint presentation already for staff meeting um, to show kind of information on household income and how much renters spend of their household income. And I have two slides for that. And I pulled that from DataShare. So now I'm gonna go back um, to DataShare and um, just walk through a little bit. So that was, okay, so the first way you can find data, go to the all data section and look under keyword search. And that feature is also available in the upper right hand corner. Um, another way you can look at data is looking at indicators by location level. So if you're really interested in looking at um, maybe access to health or health insurance coverage rates at certain levels and you want to know which indicators are broken out at which uh, location levels, this is a great place to look. So if I know I want zip code level data on health insurance coverage rates, I can look at this health and access to health services section um, and look at the different ones that break out at that level. So this is the zip code column, census place, census tract, and I can see which indicators break out at those levels. So that's kind of a better way to search if you know that you want a certain breakout level or a certain location breakout level. Um, another way to search is going back to the home page, this indicator topic um, section that I talked about before. If you aren't really sure what data you're looking for, you don't really have a keyword in mind, um, and you kind of just generally, like maybe I want, um, like, Maybe I'm working with cradle to career and I'm looking for maybe some math data or data on like third grade math proficiency or language arts proficiency. Um, but I'm not really sure what grade I want and I'm kind of fine with math or language arts. I would look at general education data um, and I can see, I'm gonna select indicators because I want the indicators. And I can see um, all the different data points related and indicators related to education here. So there's some related to um, child care, bachelor's and high school degrees, um, and then here we have some on student performance, so I can look at proficiency levels at different ages or different grades. So that's kind of another way to search for data if you're interested in kind of more a general overview of what data is available for a certain topic. So those were a couple ways to search for data and then we'll have a chance to practice that later. Um, we also have some ways to interact with data. So the two main ways are building a dashboard and creating a report. And we have tutorials on both of those here. Dashboards are compilation of, compilations of indicators around a certain topic. Um, so I'm gonna show one here. So hot topics are just dashboards that we rotate every month. Um, and we have one on oral health. So this is an example of a dashboard. So it's just all the indicators around oral health brought together. Um, so we can, we have these different cards that can be downloaded. So if you want to save this children who have had oral about health evaluations card, you can save it and it'll just download to your computer. Um, again, all of these charts can be downloaded as a JPEG so I can click download as JPEG and then pull it into my Word document, pull it into my PowerPoint presentation um, or however I want to display that information. So these are dashboards, you're able to create them. And again, I would review that tutorial um, for more information on how to do that. We also have creating a report. So I'm gonna walk through this a little more, um, but these can be used to, I'm, I mostly use them to create handouts. So um, if I want to show, kind of have like a one pager on a certain topic, these are a great way uh, to do those, to create those. So maybe for my presentation at staff meeting, um, I want to create a one pager on the rent burden um, and to show more information on um, renters who are spending 30% or more of their household income on rent. So I just went to, again, I just went to data, interact with data and clicked create a report. And it brought me to this screen. Um, and I'm just gonna click Santa Cruz County because I'm kind of doing the whole county. But if you wanted to do a specific census places of code, you could do it specifically on that as well. 
So, um, it's bringing me to this option so I can pull in different pieces. So I can pull in different indicators, demographic information, socio needs index, location. So if I wanted to pull in a map, um, a legend, a text box. So any kind of titles I want to add or analysis can be pulled in with a text box. Um, and then it also allows you to pull in horizontal or vertical lines to kind of break up your page a little bit and organize it. So I'm going to go to indicators and again, I'm focusing on rent. So I just typed in rent and I'm going to search that. And I'm going to select my renter spending 30% or more of their household income on rent. And then it's going to give me these options for different components to pull in. So components are just charts. Um, some of these are gauges, indicator values, maps, just different kind of visualizations of that data point. So let's see. Um, I think it would be helpful to have a chart that shows the zip codes within the selected location. So this chart is just going to show me, and it gives you an example here. Um, of what that's going to look like. So it's going to show the zip codes like we saw on the indicator detail page. Um, I might also pull in a gauge that would show us compared to California counties because I think that that's a really strong data point because it showed that we're so much worse than other California counties. Um, I'm going to pull in the indicator value. So that was that 61.1%. I want that. Um, Maybe I also want a map of my zip codes. So I'm going to select that. And um, we'll start with that. I'm going to click Add. So it'll populate everything here. And then you can drag each of these around. So maybe I want this under that. Um, you can pull the arrows to make anything bigger or smaller. And then if I decide I don't want this County Santa Cruz text block at the top, I can click the orange X and remove that text box. You can also edit any of these text, box, text boxes. So if I click this little square with a pencil in it, um, I can edit it. I can make different headers, different colors. Um, I can add more text. So if I want to add in Santa Cruz County, I can add and save that. Um, I'm going to make it a little bigger and pull things down. Um, and I can see here that I didn't add the source. And so maybe I want to add that as well. So I'm going to go back to indicators and insert source name. And I'm going to click add and that'll pop up there at the bottom too. Um, again, yeah, you can resize anything. You can add in maps. Um, you can add in demogra demographic information. So maybe I want to add in some information about income. I could do that. Um, I could add in a text box. So let's say I have kind of my own analysis or um, I want to add my recommendation for where to target certain or which zip codes to target with um, more rent right notifications or um, eviction, you know, what, what are your rights around eviction? Um, I could add my analysis here. And then there would be a text box here with that. So the great thing about these reports is that you can save them and download them. So again, I can print them out as a handout to go along with my PowerPoint. Um, so if you click save, I can download it as a PDF and then print it or email it to someone um, or include it in another Word document. I can also save it for later and um, send the link to a friend or send to a colleague that I'm collaborating with. Um, and that's really useful as well. So that was creating a report. Um, and again, if you have any questions, I know I went over that pretty quickly. I would recommend going to the tutorials and I have a full tutorial on that, on building out a report there. So that was the couple ways to interact with data. So building a dashboard and creating a report. Um, we also have this local progress section on data share. So this is um, pages that where initiatives or organizations 
have um, brought together their data and shown what they're doing around a certain topic. So for example, um, we have the Safety Net Clinic Coalition. So these are all the safety net clinics, and um, this is one of the HIP programs, but they come together every couple of year or a couple times a year um, and look at their data and um, kind of they have a couple data points that they're in particular really um, interested in. And so they have total patient visits provided, insurance coverage rates, and visits by type of care. And so traditionally this data is reported to uh, UDS or OSHFED, but um, it's not really accessible to other clinics. Um, and so data shares are a great way to pull together those different data points into one, one platform um, that's really outward facing so other people can access this data and it's not just stuck up in UDS or OSHFED. Um, so if I click this, total patient visits provided, I can see the data here by organization um, that each safety net clinic provided. So I can see that the Diabetes Health Center up here in 2018 had around 1,700 visits. Um, so I can kind of see all that data here. And then going back, um, I can also see other things. So patient visits by type of care. I can see you know, how many dental visits um, there were in 2018. And so again, this data really wasn't publicly accessible before, but now it is on this site. So this is also where the core results menu will eventually be. Um, and I'm just gonna show you a very, it's in the process of being built out on our staging site. So this is a private site that um, you need a username and password to log into. So it's not publicly available yet but I'm just gonna show you kind of a brief overview of what it will eventually look like. Um, so this is the core page and there are the eight core conditions down here. So eventually um, or soon you'll be able to pick a core condition and look at the data under that core condition and under that impact level. So that's an exciting thing coming to DataShare soon. Um, going back to our live site, we have resources as well. So I kind of discussed this, but um, these are different, you know, local resources such as the CAP. Um, we also have the birth report, the county health status. Um, we have the, the 2015 senior needs assessment and other local resources here. Um, we also have some state and national resources from the CDC um, and other organizations. We also have other data sources. So obviously we're never gonna have all the data that's available. Um, so we can help point you in other directions towards other data sources. Um, so I think we have like the Kids Count and um, Community Commons, Strong Star Index, and other places that you may want to look for data. Um, we also have an About Us section where you can contact us if you have any questions. And I'll also put my email in the chat. And if you have any questions or um, have data points that you're interested in having up on DataShare, that is a place where you can get in touch with us about that. Also, if you have a report that your organization has produced and you want it up on DataShare, please let us know um, through that contact us button and uh, we would love to have it up. So um, I'm going to move into a little bit of the practice section. So we're going to um, work on searching for indicators. So I went through those three different ways to search for indicators. So the keyword search um, using the topic bar on the homepage, if you have kind of a general idea of what you're interested in, but not sure quite exactly which keywords to search for. Um, and searching by location level if you are really interested in looking at um, a certain topic at different location levels. So the first thing um, I want everyone to kind of practice using the keyword search and I want you to look for um, information on internet subscriptions. So we all know that a lot of students are doing online learning right now and a 
very important aspect of that is having an internet subscription. So this is data that you may be interested in looking at um, if you're looking at certain areas to target to increase messaging around how to get an internet subscription um, or different populations that you may be interested in targeting. So I'm going to give everyone a second to go to data share and I think Nicole put that link um, in the chat. So once you're there, um, try to do a keyword search for internet subscriptions. And then Sarah, can you also demo that on your screen yeah. in case people are also looking at that? Yes. So the first thing we're going to do is go to data and view data and we're going to click all data. And I'm going to click in search by keyword. And I'm just going to do internet. You could have also used this upper right hand search section. Um, so it looks like a couple indicators came up for this. There's households with an internet subscription and households with one or more computing devices. So it'd be both very important data points if you're looking at um, barriers to online learning. So I'm going to select households with an internet subscription and I just want to look at an overview of the county for now. So I'm going to select the county. Wait a sec while that loads. Great, so it brought me to this indicator, households with an internet subscription. And I can again see some data on the county and how we compare to other counties and then also the zip code level data down here. So if I compare us to the Santa Cruz County value, I can see which uh, zip codes have very high levels of households with internet subscriptions and then which ones I might want to target some messaging around. So is everyone able to successfully do that? I'll give people another second just to make sure they found that. Okay, so um, another way to search is using the topic bar. So um, let's say I'm working with Cradle to Career and again, want some information on education. So I'm gonna click on education. And um, I'm gonna click on indicators. And it's gonna show me all of the indicators here that relate to education. And I can view all the items in this topic here. So again, that's another way to search if you're not very sure which keywords to search for um, and just kind of want a broader overview of the indicators available. And so for our third way, um, I want you, if you're working on this on your own screen, to try to find, to go by indicators by location level and um, find data on substance use. So maybe you're interested in doing messaging in certain areas um, and want that data broken out at the zip code level or census tract or census place area. So try to take a second and um, look for substance use indicators at different location levels. And I'll walk through that on my screen if you are looking at my screen. So I'm just gonna go to data and then view data, and I want to look at indicators by location level. So I'm going to select this. And I'm going to scroll down. So these are health indicators. And so substance use is probably um, under the larger category of health. So I'm scrolling down here and here are some indicators on substance use and I can see what's available at the county level. So again, all indicators are available at the county level and then I can see which ones break out by zip code. Um, so I can look at the age adjusted emergency room rate due to opioid use, due to substance use, um, like a hospitalization rates due to opioid and substance use. Um, I can look at the quarterly opioid prescription rate, 
and residents on more than 90 MMEs of opioids daily. So maybe those are um, important indicators and indicators I want to look at at those other location levels. So if you does anyone have any thing that they want to say for people who worked on it themselves, were they able to find it? You can use the little emoticons to show if you found it, you can do a thumbs up or something. You can raise your hand or sh use a thumbs up from the participants box if you've got that opened up or you can share something through the chat. Uh, Sarah Javier has a question about searching for LGBTQ plus demographics. So that is um, a breakout category that we don't have right now, but that's something that we're uploading data on. Um, so we're hoping to upload that as a breakout category. So you would see that under, like if you were looking at an indicator where it says age, um, gender, and race and ethnicity, it would say um, it would also break out by LGBTQIA+. And I think... And that would depend on the whether that actual data source collects it in that way yeah, and it would break depend. it down in that way. Mm -hmm. So because we're such a small county, there have been some problems breaking out in really small ways. Um, so not every indicator breaks out by all of the breakout categories um, because the values are unstable or they wouldn't allow for anonymity. Um, but if the source breaks it out at that level, then we can break it out at that level. And as we, as Nicole and I have been working with Sarah and Dorian and others at HIP to uh, build out what Sarah showed a moment ago, the core results menu, which will be this interactive way of finding indicators within each of those eight core conditions. Um, as we've been kind of doing that work and trying to see what indicators are already in data share that align with the core conditions and what other data do we need to be trying to locate or um, be able to help add to data share. It's raised a lot of new ideas for us and, and we've learned about different data sources. And so if any of you uh, have suggestions or know of particular data sources and you're not seeing something on data share, that's the kind of stuff that's great to suggest to HIP um, so that they can look into it further and see if that's something that, again, could be added to data share. Yeah, and please feel free to contact us if you have suggestions um, or you have reports that should be added. Just let us know. Rose says she could dive into this for hours, <laughs> which I <laughs> we know that a lot of us. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. How about I'd, I'd be curious to hear uh, what other data people have tried to search for themselves just now, either the through the suggestions that Sarah made about particular indicators or like Javier that was looking for something particular, feel free to type it in the chat or if anyone wants to unmute themselves, you can tell us verbally. Sandra says she loves this. We love it when people love data. <laughs> Armando saying he searched for fathers and no information on that as of yet, which would be good to have. And if you have suggestions or you have sources, um, please let us know. And, I and Sarah, do you, th that might actually be a good time to explain um, the difference between these community level indicators that are in data share that come from publicly available sources versus the eventual goal to, uh, to have a method for uploading more program level or program specific data that might come from local partners. Yeah, so right now all the data on data share is from HCI. So they are the organization that we run data share through and they have they support similar sites to data share across the country. Um, and so currently they upload and maintain all the indicators on data share. So the 270 that are on data share right now, when new data is released, they'll upload it. Um, so and to Juliana's question about how often data points are updated. Um, so HCI will update the data point anytime 
it's new data is released. And I think they have like a three month or 90 day grace period after that data is released by the source to have it updated on data share. Um, so that's really nice because it doesn't, it's just automatically done. Um, and then we're also starting to move towards incorporating local data and data that's created, uh, that's collected locally and um, are in the process of developing a way to do that equitably and make sure that it's easy to request data to be uploaded um, and that we have, that we're able to maintain it and update it um, every time new data is released. So we are hoping to start uploading. We've started uploading a couple indicators um, ourselves and we're hoping to update and upload more. And um, we're currently working with HCI to upload, to have them upload more indicators for us, which is great because then they maintain them um, and update them. And so we're looking at having the indicators on data share, hopefully get to kind of 400-ish indicators, 450 indicators in the coming months. And then we have another comment from Peter saying he's looking for race-based data. And I know there's a couple different ways to find race-based data. So you want, is there something you could show us? Yeah, so um, some indicators break out by race and ethnicity. And um, we've talked about uh, having kind of a similar thing to indicators by location level, but um, we're heavily advised against it by HCI because once you get too many breakout groups, it like doesn't work anymore. And we're hoping to break out by quite a few things. Um, but if you're interested in like kind of a general topic, I would suggest looking at um, using the topic bar to kind of find um, indicators around that topic and then looking through the indicators and seeing which ones break out by race and ethnicity. Let's see. Um, let's see if these just gonna look at some health insurance ones just so I can see. So this one breaks out by gender. So this is what it looks like um, when they break out by gender. And then there'll be another square under here that says age or race, race and ethnicity if it breaks out by that. Um, and as part of this uploading data with HCI and asking them to upload additional breakout groups, we've asked for more of the indicators to um, be uploaded with the ability to break out by race and ethnicity. And um, the only reason that some of them wouldn't be is because at that level for, um, for race and ethnicity, the numbers are too small that it is either unstable or um, there's no anonymity. So, but definitely um, looking through some of these, some of them are definitely able to be broken out by race and ethnicity. And I can continue to look for some of those. And actually, that's a that is a a, a good point. One of the um, really great things about how data share has been evolving is that is our relationship with um, the vendor um, HCI conduit, and um, we have regular calls with them to discuss what their um, changing and adding, and um, they've been very flexible and very responsive. So, Sarah, I think we should put that on our list to ask whether um, that might be in that, you know, a way to search for those indicators that are broken out by. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's one indicator that does break out by different things. I just kind of was looking through indicators till I found this, but this is just what it looks like um, here. So again, you're able to, this one breaks up by age, gender, and race and ethnicity, and you're able to download any of these cards. And then there is that demographics section, mm -hmm. right? So you summary demographics on um, Santa Cruz County. So you can look here, this is an overall summary, and then we have someone race and ethnicity, um, age, sex, education, employment. So if you wanted um, to get, have some more data on this, you can look at these populations by race, um, charts and graphs. 
here. And then um, you can also download these. So let's say you wanted to include this pie chart. You can download it as a JPEG and then put it into your own report or into your own presentation. Thank you. And then Sandra had a question about whether there's an email chat feature where someone could ask specifics or about client needs, which is slightly, it sounds like it's slightly different from asking about kind of data related needs and a way to get referrals from other peers, or I'm assuming that also means making referrals. And so I think that Dorian might be a good person to answer that question to talk about what other efforts are going on around that. Great. Um, yes, and I just, in fact, put something in uh, the chat about this. So there is a uh, separate effort going on that HIP, um, the Health Improvement Partnership, is part of coordinating along with the Santa Cruz Health Information Organization, the, the health, the HIE for the, for the county. Um, and in coordination with uh, the County of Santa Cruz Health Services Agency to develop um, a community directory and referral service. And uh, we're um, calling this effort Together We Care, and it's being built um, primarily around um, wanting to um, increase the effectiveness of referrals, um, between social service providers and healthcare providers and the other way around too and from social service providers to other social service providers. Um, and we'd um, welcome your interest and engagement in that and you can contact me. Um, I put my email address in there to, to find out more information. And then may I answer uh, Armando's question also? Please. Um, so, uh, one of the, the things that Sarah showed you is local progress, and really that is our effort to, um, to bring all this data um, into, into focus around specific efforts going on in Santa Cruz County. And so, um, you saw that the, the um, SafeRx is there and uh, the, the, um, we have one on local disparities. We're also building one um, about, um, that, that focuses on Cradle to Career, which is an initiative um, around education and social services and healthcare that's focused um, in, the, in the Live Oak area. That's, that's gonna be coming up very soon. And so we're, um, uh, we have been, looking for other uh, initiatives like this. We're also gonna bring, we have one in the works about um, um, policy farming, uh, policy issues out of the uh, Pajaro Valley specifically. So there's gonna be one of these um, local progress sections about that coming soon. So, so the, the short answer is um, there isn't a particular size Get, get in touch uh, with us through contact us and we'll discuss what it is that you're, that you're looking for and how we can best meet that need, either through helping to develop a local progress section or adding specific indicators. Great, thanks Dorian. So we have just a few minutes left. I think we're gonna start moving to our wrap up. Sarah, if I could get you to unshare your screen. I'm going to show our final slide and Nicole Lesnar will close us out. Okay. Thank you so much, Sarah and Dorian, and all of you for your questions and participation. I'm sure there are more questions um, that we could keep at. We'll consider doing some follow-ups of this, but we really encourage you to take advantage of the tutorials and resources that are right baked into the data share site because there's, they will reward some time spent with them. So to try to get some ideas about how you're planning to use the information that you learned today, we have a little poll going. And we also would encourage you to handle the, um, to uh, respond to the feedback survey that you see in the URL 
um, in the chat and also on the screen here because we really use your feedback to identify topics for future chats. We don't have our topic yet for next week, but if you'll tune in, uh, same time, same channel, Tuesdays at 10, we will be getting a, um, an email out to all of you who are on our mailing list to share what that will be. But meanwhile, let us know your ideas for future chats or, or more of this kind of thing. We're trying to balance uh, practical things with some more reflective things that capture what's going on in the community, both in response to COVID-19 and other enduring issues. So uh, it looks like there's a lot of different um, uses for, for data share and the information you got here. And if you, if you responded other, I want to put, put your example into the chat. We'd love to hear what that is. And I'm sure Sarah and Dorian would as well. For the recording, since anyone watching it later won't see the actual poll, we're asking after today's guided tour of data share, I can see myself using it in the future for and you can select multiple options here, preparing grant proposals, strategic and or program planning, building a dashboard, adding more data, charts or maps to your agency's communications, identifying community needs, advocacy, staff training, all of the above, or none of the above, which no one has selected, uh, or other. And uh, as Nicole said, if you selected other, we'd love to hear what you plan to use it for in the chat box. We have a response from Francie there about um, using this with students for thinking critically about their community, Ooh. educators, um, same way. So thanks for that. That's a great idea. That's great. So quite a few people are saying that they could see themselves using this for preparing grant proposals and strategic and program planning for their communications and identifying community needs. So it's exactly what DataShare was intended for. So that's good news. We'll leave the poll open just a few moments longer. We see people are still, still filling it out. So as you're leaving us, um, be safe, be kind to each other, to yourselves, and thank you everyone for joining us today and especially to our guests for taking the time to share their knowledge with you. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Dorian. Thanks everyone. Thank you.